Thank Allah for uh, making it possible for those recitations. May Allah reward you for the recitation yeah, and may Allah reward us for listening as well. Uh, following up from yesterday, uh, we shouldn't forget the fact that the basis, you know, uh, the, the basis of a good understanding of Surah Al Anfal is the Battle of Badr. You know, the Battle of Badr and the lessons in it for Muslims generally, collectively and individually. Now, the last verses that we looked at yesterday was in relation to the fact that Allah advises us Muslims to beware of arrogance. We should beware of arrogance not to, I mean, uh, fall into the trap of our shaitan. Because one of the traps of our shaitan uh, to lead a person astray is to, I mean, um, tease us with arrogance. You know, as a shaitan did to the Quraysh, Abu Jahl and his forces when they were coming to meet the Muslims in Badr. Even though they were large in numbers, a shaitan deceived them about this, you know, extolling them, and they overestimated their abilities and their capacities. And, and Allah disgraced them, Allah defeated them. You no, know, Allah, the Prophet says in one hadith that Allah indicated that al Kibriya, you know, uh, Izari, that is uh, uh, arrogance or pride is my garment. Allah says that pride is his garment. And Allah detests that anybody should contest it with him. Allah says anybody who contests with me about this, I will disgrace him. So we should be very, very conscious of this fact. Allah is sure of God for Motu Motu, Allah Majika Jura Waluju. Allah Majika. I mean, you see, the, 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 the Yorubas actually also say this. They say they usually say Roman so be a Iberaga Luman Shuadu Pano. No? So Iberaga Luman Shuadu Pano. So it's 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 a these are words of wisdom and the Quran also emphasizes it. Now leading on from there, Allah now reminds us this also this ayah also is in relation to the incident of Badr. But generally we can also learn lessons from it in relation to our daily lives. We hear it every day. Ordinarily, as we said, the Muslims' forces during the Battle of Badr were very few, 313. And the forces of the Quraysh were so much more in number, 1,000 and more. And they had horses, they had armaments, and they had much more capability. So ordinary, looking at it rationally, ordinarily, one will say that perhaps maybe the Muslims were being deceived about their religion, or maybe they, they, were, they, they, they were overestimating their own capabilities in putting themselves in harm's way. And this is how the Quraysh saw it. 
You know, it was Iman. It was the belief in Allah that Allah will help them, Allah will assist them. That was pushing them to say that, you know, I mean, and there were a lot of examples in that regard. But the Kafirun, the Mushrikun of Mecca saw it differently. What they were saying, apart from being arrogant, they were also undermining, they were looking down on the Muslims because their numbers were very small. And Allah says, Remember, You know, but Allah says, Allah says, Oh Messenger, remember, when the Munafikun, you know, when the Munafikun, the hypocrites, and those in whose hearts is a disease, they said, they said these people's religion is misleading them. They said that these people's religion is misleading them. But Allah replied, Allah says. One thing that they didn't know in Katawamani, Allah says, Waman Yatawa Kal Allah, for in Allah Azizun Hakim. Anybody who puts his trust, anybody who puts his faith in Allah, certainly Allah is most exalted, the most wise. You know, and we do see this all the time. I mean, a lot of time people will look down on you. Tell about thing, Bagoshinka. You know, tell about thing, Bagoshi, about Drolori, Bagoshi. You find people who do not believe in the You know, when you face such circumstances, the right answer will be what Allah has said. You reply by saying, Allah and in many parts of the Quran, Allah says this many times. Anybody who puts his trust and faith in Allah, Allah will suffice them. So, we you know, we, we have to understand this very, very, very well. Faith. Faith is very, very, very powerful. When, I mean, when all the power, when all the where the powers end that is where faith begins when where your powers and this is why you find in life i mean with the rational explanation now I mean, people talk about mysteries if this is miraculous this is mysterious i mean that goes to show you okay, there's some sometimes some, some things do happen beyond our comprehension beyond our explanation beyond the normal one plus one is two that we know because i mean the normal thing in life is however you see one plus one must always be two we will base things on facts but a lot of times things do happen that you cannot explain them factually you can't explain them factually you think i mean but how 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 how, how can this happen so you are able to see that a lot of the time so imagine how you can go the new back and you are alone you know we should always put our trust in allah tabati establish faith here the faith you have drew faith can work wonders yes faith it can work wonders to believe you know amaya ile nu pe ah ona ba ima gban gban Allah now says, Walau Tara, Walau Tara is yet a walla di Macafar, Almela Icatria, the Buddha, who you are the Baram, who are Allah now tells the Holy Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah says, You don't mind them because I mean. They, they, will, they will meet their reward. In Badr, they suffered a defeat. They suffered, the Mushrikun, I mean, suffered a defeat at Badr here in the world. And in the hereafter, as Allah says, they will also face punishment. And Allah was telling the Prophet Muhammad yes. You know, faith, believe faith, 
it will, it works for us while we are alive it works for us while we are alive and it, the faith of a believer will also work for him at the point of death the faith of a, of a believer will work for him at the point of death it will also work for you in the grave in the barzakh and it will work for you at yom al qiyamah I mean, there are a lot of traditions, a lot of ahadith that indicates the experience that human beings go through at the point of death, when they are on their deathbed. There are many traditions. The experiences are not similar. The experience which you might see people, I mean, because we don't, these are spiritual things, physically you might not see. But when a person is on the deathbed, I mean, when a person is about dying, the experience they are going through, we don't, we don't go through them. They are, they are, so the experiences are different. If it's a believer, and Allah tells the Prophet, Allah says, Allah, Allah, Allah tells the Prophet, you don't bother about what they are saying. Because Allah tells the Prophet, Allah says, If it were possible for you to see, you know, is yet our fallazina kafarun malaika when the angels are taking the souls of those who have no faith. <laughs> if I mean you know you, um, I want you to be conscious of the terminology here. Allah says, It means these are things we cannot see. You know, uh, Kale Mari, you could see somebody on the deathbed, and they are, uh, they, things are going on that we do not see. <laughs> and this is why Allah says, well, Tara, if you could have seen, is the Atawa Fal Levina Kafarun Malai Katu, every Buddha would do home, that the angels who are taking the soul of those who disbelieve, every Buddha would do home at Barahum, beating their faces and beating their backsides. <laughs> You know, beating them front and back, mm. you know, and they're telling them, Wazuku Azab al Hari, test the penalty of the blazing fire. I mean, test the penalty of the blazing fire. I mean, Wama Jay, Rura, the same thing. I mean, the, 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 this tells us that when a person dies and he's put in the grave, you know, if he's a believer, the, the grave will expand for him, and there will be a hole dredged. All these are spiritual, which we Muslims believe in. And there will be a dredge in the grave whereby a, a fresh air and pleasure of, uh, of Al Jannah will be blowing into him until they are raised. If it is a non believer, if it is a Kafir, a non believer who is a non worshipper, you know, the grave will compress. It will compact, it will compress and compact to the extent that the ribs of the right will crack up to the ribs of the left. This is what Hadith tells us. And there will be a dredge of a hole, and hot air from Jahannam will be blowing into it until that person is raised on Yom Al-Qiyam. So you see, the experiences are not different. Allah says, I mean, if you look in Surah Al-Am, uh, Al um, um, I think, uh, yes, chapter 6, Ayah 93, the Quran tells us the same thing. This is why we Muslims believe strongly in this. Because Allah confirms it in many parts of the Quran. You know, Allah says in Surah Al Quran, chapter 6, ayah 93. Allah says down the ayah. Allah says down the in this ayah as well, Allah says that this goes to show again that I mean if you see Tolamaro ye this experience is there are things we cannot see. Allah says Walautara, if it were possible for you to see. Is a zalimun of figamaratil mouth. When the evil doers are, you know, at the point of death. In Batia, Walabusi, and Walai Shesi, 
to abanko kwa kakulo wo wal malaika tu basi tu aidihi you know and the angels you know the angels i mean are saying that well bring give us your souls akhriju 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 anfusakum al yaw that is let your soul comes out so it's it's this is what we are saying about faith faith is not only about you ah igbagbo mi o je o nje kadu ami gba igbagbo my faith let me get what i want you know we also have to reflect at the point of death and the truth is this you see well, i mean somebody might say that well how do you know why do we need to believe in this the reason why we do, we need to believe in it is actually because we don't know but the reality is that we will all face death mm. I mean, do you get the point the reality is we will all face death if the reality if you cannot run away from that it is an experience now if islam if the books of islam are explaining it this way is it not much more safer to be on the safe side to prepare rather than saying well i mean maybe it may not happen if we if the, if for example if death was not a reality then people could say that well what you are talking is nonsense but as long as death is a reality and nobody has gone and come but our belief our, 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 the, the creator is telling us that this is what happens because we don't see it it's spiritual you know so it is very very essential you know shida we can tell you igbagbo how we should prepare we should look after our faith because we will need it all the time we will need it not only here in this world we will need it at the point of exit from this world and the taba one no lena am i need it but we need our faith you know and to the job when the alkama when we are raised we will need our faith so it is very 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 essential that we take note of this you know this is why faith is essential is important so allah says ذَلِكَ بِمَا قَدَّمَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَيْسَ ذَلِكَ بِمَا قَدَّمَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ This is because ذَلِكَ بِمَا قَدَّمَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ This is because of your own handiwork. You know? This is because of your own handiwork. The work of non-believers. I mean, people will be compensated according to their deeds. ذَلِكَ بِمَا قَدَّمَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ This is because of what you've done. You know, Allah created you, Allah provided everything for you, Allah looked after, after you in life, yet you decided not to believe in Allah, you decided not to worship Him. Allah says, Allah will never be unjust to His servants. It is not about injustice, Allah will never be unjust. Because the truth is, in Islamic context, we usually say that, why do we need to worship Allah? I mean, Allah, Allah could have said that, yes, worship me, and that's a full stop. But Allah doesn't, for us, for, for he, he provides evidence. Allah provides evidence in many parts of the Quran to show that who are yastahakko belibada. That is, he's entitled that we should worship him. You know, he asks us, for example, in Surah Al-Baqarah, he says, Why do you, why do you deny Allah? Why do you refuse to worship Allah? You were not in existence before. And Allah brought you to existence. Yeah. You to to come. Come. And remember, yeah. after a while, after a while, you are going to die again. Yeah. After you die, He will raise you again. Yeah. And you will return back to me. You know, you and He went on. If you look in Surah Al Baqarah, He went on. Allah went on to argue that well, He created the heavens for us. He created the earth for us. I mean, what we eat, the wind we, I mean, the air we breathe in and things like that. So you are able to see that all these indicate that we need Allah is our creator and we need to worship him as he should be worshipped. And if we do not worship him and Allah punishes, Allah says, The punishment is based on what your hands, what you did yourselves. Because Allah is never unjust. To his creator. I mean, they will, we will have been talking about injustice if Allah did not give us advance notice. That's advance notice. We hear it all the time. Allah says, if you do good, you reap it. If you do evil, you'll be punished. Allah tells us that, well, if you worship me, if you do this, this is the proper, this is the, the, the reward. If you do not, if you do that, this is the punishment. Because Allah Himself said in the hadith, you could say, 
You know, the only Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Allah can never be unjust because in Hadith you could say, Allah says, Ya Ibadi. Allah says, Oh my servants, Inni haram tu zulma ala nafsi wajatuhu bainakum muharraman. I have made injustice prohibited for myself. Allah says, Oh my servants, I have made injustice prohibited for myself. I, I, I make it prohibited also amongst yourselves. You know, he says, For Allah Tazalemu, do not be unjust. Ya Ibadi, he said, Oh my servants, inna mahiya a'amalukum. Anything that befalls you is because of your own deeds. Inna mahiya a'amalukum. Allah says, Certainly it is your deeds. You know, who see her lakum, it is your deeds that I will weigh for you. It is your deeds that I will, I will, I will wear for you. Faman wajada khairan fali ahmid Allah. Anybody who meets good, who sees good, let him thank Allah. You know? Waman wajada gaira hu fala yaluman na illa nafsa. Anybody who sees an evil should not blame anybody except himself. Anybody who does a good deed will see the good reward. And anybody who does evil will see the consequences because your Lord will never be unjust to his servant. Our destiny is in our own hands. No, because Allah has given us the intellect <coughs> for us to be able to distinguish this. So our, in, our, our destiny is in our own hands. And may Allah make good deeds easy for us to do. Amen. So Allah, tell, Allah tells them, I mean, Kadabi Ali Fir'aun. Kadabi Ali Fir'aun wallazima min qablihim kafaru bi ayatillahi faakhadahumullahu bidunubihim <laughs> Allah gives examples. It is not only about theory that this is what we will do, that is what we will do. Instances of this have happened on earth before, which we all know. I mean, the story of Pharaoh is very, very popular. Pharaoh, I mean, and the, the different Pharaohs. You know, the Muslims know the story of Pharaoh, the Christians know it. It's very, very popular. Allah says, Kadabi Ali Fir'aun. It is similar, it is like the people of Fir'aun, Walladina min kablihim, and those who were before them, like the Ad, the Thamud. You know, Allah tells us the story of the Thamud, the stories of the Ad, those who, I mean, did not uh, comply by the injunctions of Allah. And Allah punished them, clearly. I mean, we know Fir'aun, the story of Fir'aun, I mean, it's very, very well known. He drowned in the Red Sea while he was trying to cross it and his mummy actually was detected later on you know and it's there in the museums for people to see so it's there it's a fact Allah says Kadabi Ali Fir'aun is like the people of Fir'aun and those before them like Adam the Thamud you know they disbelieved in the verses of Allah and Allah got hold of them because of their because of their sins. Allah got hold of, the, of them because of, of their evil deeds. In Allah kawiyun shadidun al Listen, Allah says who are kawiyun. Allah says he is very powerful. No matter how powerful you are, Allah says he will catch it. In Allah kawiyun because Pharaoh was very powerful on earth. See that's better now, Kuba. Because now you see you see examples so many examples because Allah is a kawi Allah about balak barani ku senti olemu uh, uh, let me tell you, I mean the truth. I mean uh, uh, um Baba Tonja Lai Lai Pare Ab Naziz Ari she colour colour go ba tele go ba deli fum. Colour go ba she won't let me know. Kali Kali or no Kali and Lir woke on Rako Maku ni Baba Lu to my Firana. Ibe whatever it will cost only. But 
you know, but but Jack Balade, Yanni, but you will lay any, but yeah, you need key or burning any, but your money, and me, but your picking, co, 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 you find out in the Quran, the Quran has 114 chapters. And over 113 of them, we have Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yes, we know that Allah, and this goes to show that we know certainly that Allah is ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. He is the most merciful, most beneficent. But we should not lose sight of the fact that he is also severe in punishment. You know, I want your man so, and it's very true. Any your your bar, any any any, kila zimba, any tira, any 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 keu. It is like I mean, when any any tira, just to my film, bar man, reshere. Oh, that is my film today. You know, I mean, it will it will it will actually be belittling. To Allah to say that well Allah cannot punish. It, it, in Islam, we have to face the reality. You know, Allah is most merciful, most beneficent. Yet, if you offend Him, Allah is severe in punishment. You no, know? although He gives us long ropes, He gives us long ropes. Because he indicated in one hadith he could see the Prophet Allah Sallam tells us, and that is the benefit. But our God Yahya we should not abuse it. Allah says when he created the heavens and earth, the first thing that was written down in the statement of Allah was Inna Rahmati Min Dadadi. That is my mercy, you know, overwhelms my anger. That does not yet yeah, that Allah has the power to punish, even though he is over and over merciful. So I got back. Being a lot of shaman saw in many parts of the Quran. When Allah talks a lot about his Rama, his Rama, his mercy, his forgiveness. You know, when we were, were yesterday, when we started on uh, this tafsir uh, on uh, last week and yesterday, we have been talking so much about the fact that Allah is merciful. He has given us his tikfar. No matter what we do, we ask his tikfar. That shows the mercy of Allah. By many verses, Allah will only be talking about his Rama. But to bring our senses back, Allah will remind us. Now don't forget that I am also Shadidul Iqaw. Allah is severe and strict in punishment. Allah koma fi yare, koma fi ritel. Dalika bi'anna Allah. Dalika bi'anna Allah lam yaku mughayyiran ni'matan alaha ma ala qawmin ala qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi'anfusihim wa an and this is the nature of Allah. You know, Allah says this Zalika bi Allah Lam Yakum Gayira Niimatan and Amaha Ala Kaumin Hatta Yugayiru Ma bi Amfusihim Wa an Allah Samiun Ali. But Allah, you know, Allah will not in Allah Lam Yakum Gayira Niimatan and Amaha Ala Kaumin. Allah will not visit punishment. Allah will not change the blessings that he has brought to people. Allah will not change the blessings that he continues to provide people. You know, hatta yuga yiru bima amfusi until the people themselves change their own character and what is in their hearts. <laughs> what, what we need to we need to understand here very well. Allah starts with that. He will not change. Allah will not change the uh, mercies and rahma that He has done to people. He will not change. That goes to show. You see the mercy of Allah. So this is why Allah is called Rabb, Rabb, the Creator and the Sustainer. Rabb, the Neema and the Neema of Allah. The mercies of Allah are plentiful. The blessings, the blessings of Allah, Allah gives his blessings to human beings unconditionally. This is why every one of us unconditionally. You know, a lot of the time we forget when the name, when the blessings of Allah actually started for us. 
the blessings of Allah started on human beings even when we knew nothing. When we have not started doing anything, when we knew nothing. When we were born, you know, we could breathe, we could, I mean, gradual, even when we knew nothing. So it means the need we started with the name of Allah. Ordinarily, you know, we started with the name Anu Allah of Alumba Wabulatile. And Allah now says, so the default situation, the default situation is that Allah is merciful to us yeah. right from the beginning. And Allah will not change that except we ourselves now change to do something against Allah. Then Allah will now start punishing. I mean, what else? No, no, no. So you are able to see. And I mean, I, 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 and in many, this statement, I mean, if you look in Surah Torah, Allah says it again. In Allah, Allah, you get Yuruma becoming, Atta, you get Yuruma be emphasizing. Allah will not change the condition of a people until they themselves change the condition of their hearts. In faith, indeed. In faith, in faith, and indeed. In faith, in relation to our beliefs. Indeed, in relation to our injustice. Particularly, in relation to rulership. You know, what Allah, what Allah wants of rulership, a lot of the time we do get it wrong. What Allah wants of rulership is justice. What Allah wants of rulership, okay? Uh, whether of a country, whether of a, a community, whether even of a family. In Katolo Obam, fe, lati o dolori, lati o joba, o ne kweke ya shidebe. Therefore, if you have, uh, if you have a sort of, I mean, a regime, if you have a regime, even if that regime is not religious, if it is just, it will be closer to Allah than a religious religion, a religious regime that is unjust. Because rulership is is about justice. Yeah, see. So where I'm, and this answers a lot of questions. People sometimes talk about where ah, but we don't share in lay Muslim, we don't share A lot of things that happened in many of the Muslim lands is not about religion. Religion, yes, people have their individual faiths. But it's a consequence of lack of justice on the ground. You know, it is the consequence of the lack of justice. I mean, there are, I mean, there are many traditions in which one says that, well, Allah is much more closer to a, a ruler, to a non-believing ruler who is just, than a believing ruler who is unjust. That's what God said. That's what the prophet says. You know, so it is very, very, very essential. So when we talk about changing of our conditions, it's in two ways. In relation to faith individually and also in relation to the injustice that we commit against ourselves. You know, so it's very, very essential that we remember this. You know, if you want to be batting a bath, exactly. So whatever you reap, whatever you sow is what you will reap. You know, Allah now says, Kadabi Ali Frown again. Kadabi Ali Firaun, Waladina bin Kabulihim Kadabu Kadabu Biayati Rabbim Falakna Kumbidu Nobihim Wagrakina Ala Firaun, Wakulum Kanu Zalimi. Allah says, Kadabi Ali Frown, you see, it is his two ways now. Kadabi Ali Firaun, Kadabi. The first part relates to faith. The second one, if you look at you, if you look at the construction, you'll be able to see Kadabi Ali Firaun. Allah says similar examples of this, of punishment, changing punishment in relation to for consequences of injustice, can also be seen. Examples are in the people of Firaun, one Levina min kablihim, and those before them. Allah says, Kazabu bi ayati rabbihim. You know, they belied the signs of their Lord. Allah says, Faha lepina hum bizunu bihim. And we destroyed them because of their sins. Wa agrakina ala fraun. And we drowned fraun and his people. Wa kullun kanu zalimin. You know, Allah says, the reason was that all these people were unjust. They were leaders, they were unjust. And for because of the injustice, Allah destroyed them. You know, the ad, Allah destroyed them. Fraun, Allah drowned him. So you are able to see that it is not only about faith, 
as Muslims. You know, we have to we have to keep our faith well, and secondly, our faith should push us to be just in whatever we do individually. Because as I said, Allah indicates, Allah says in Hadith of Qudsi, which the Prophet said, Ya ibadi, inni haram tu zulma ala nafsi wa ja'altuhu muharraman bainakum. I have made injustice prohibited to myself and I make it prohibited amongst you yourselves. No. So it is, it, is, it is very, very essential. Every Friday we say it. Inna Allah ya'murukum bil adli wa lisan wa ita'izil. Allah commands you with justice. Allah commands you with justice. You know, people usually ask, they do, they ask some of the scholars that, okay, but when we talk about justice, justice is an abstract thing. What do we mean about justice? What is justice? Can you explain justice to us? That when Allah commands justice. So how do you know justice? First, it is very easy to know because if Allah says, Ya Murubil Adil, if Allah says that He commands with justice, everything that Allah commands is just. Yes. Do, you, do you get the point? And it's in Allah, Ya Murubil Adil. So the first way to know justice is kill Allah about winning Pankai. What is the injunction of Allah about this? So if you stay by that, you'll be doing justice. The other way by which you know, the other way by which you know, when it becomes entangled, you know, the ulama, the, I mean, the, um, 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 the Muslim philosophers indicate, it's very easy to know. You can actually also know. For you to know whether you are being just in a particular situation, when you are dealing with somebody, for you to know whether you are just, you should always put yourself in their shoes. You know, when you get, you know, you know, you put yourself in their shoes because the prophet says that La yuminu ahadukum hatta yuhibba liyahihi wa None of you is a believer until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. That is the, that is the stanza of justice. If somebody says, I don't know whether I'm just or not, they all turn out dead. If you want to know whether, consider it in tone, she knew. She will live bad way. If you, are, if you decide that, ah, me will live bad way, it means you are being unjust. Yes. That's correct. You know, it's very easy. I mean, all these things, our religion teaches us, the scholars have done a lot of work on these issues. After Bantora, Wageloku. You know, always put your shoe, yourself in the shoe of the person you are dealing with. If you can't take it, it's injustice. Don't do it. You know, because you know, injustice. Azul, the prophet said that he says in one hadith, he says Azul zul yom al qiyama. The prophet said injustice will be darkness on yom al qiyama for those unjust people. That anybody who commits injustice in the world, in the hereafter, injustice will be darkness for them. Because I mean, zulm, it, it, it's the zulm, zulm, you know? I mean, in Arabic, zulm means injustice, and zulm also means darkness. So the prophet said, injustice in the world will become darkness for people who are unjust on Yom al And Allah now continues, in the Sharrat Dawab. Allah now says, In the the worst of creatures. I mean, see what we are saying. I mean, we are, we are, take actually dogmat, religious dogmatism out of this. I mean, basic everything that we are saying, you also base it on rationality. Eric, I mean, these are, I mean, anybody who has a right thinking mind will be, will be able to rationalize this. We'll be saying oh, there's reason, there's good sense in this one. Therefore, Allah says, with all these, in the shara dawab, in the law, you know, the worst of creations in the sight of Allah, are those who disbelieve and will never believe. I want to the disbelievers who are adamant will never believe. I mean, there isn't anything wrong to question. You know, the point if a person, I, I mean, I want proof for what you are saying for me to believe. When they listen and you talk, you know, people should uh, approach things with an open mind. And when they see that, well, can you talk about it? But the worst, 
the worst of creatures are those who disbelieve and are not ready to believe. I will be able to say that when I was sitting there, I saw that people do say that. People who take that position and last is in the shara and the wat in the law, they are the worst of creatures. You know, so it is very, very essential, you know, that we appreciate this. If we appreciate this, we'll really be able to appreciate the good that Allah has done to us and be able to send a lot of uh, a lot of thanks to Him. May Allah make it easy for us to thank Him and may He continue to accept our thanks. Allah. ينقضون أهدهم في كل مرة وهم لا يتقون. Now this ayah also relates to the community. That is the community of Muslims. It it relates to state relations, relationships, and it can also relate to individuals because it's an issue that happened in Medina. You know, it's an issue that happened in Medina after Ohud, after Badr. Because in when during the Battle of Badr, you know, in Medina, Medina was made up of a mixture of communities: Muslims, Jews, Christians, and Mushriku, that is atheists, pagans, Arab pagans. Now there were some among the non-Muslims in Medina, when the Muslims were going to Badr, who also had the same belief as the Mushrikun that well, they are going to perish. They were actually secretly in support of the Quraysh, that the Quraysh would crush the Muslims, you know? But after the Quraysh were defeated and they returned back to Mecca, you know, they were still, although they were disappointed, but they were still they still have some links with the Quraysh in Mecca in, 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 in their evil intention of, of wanting Islam crushed. But there was a covenant. You know, when the Prophet وسلم, became the leader in Medina, both the spiritual and the secular leader in Medina, one of the things that the Prophet did was that there was a covenant we all know, I mean, this usually is called the I mean, constitution of the Medina, you know, with Fikatul Medina. Uh, people say that it, was, it is the first constitution that was ever written. Because the Prophet knew that he was going to head a mixed community. So the Prophet, there was an, a, a covenant written between the Muslims, which, I mean, set some uh, covenants between the Muslims, the Jews, and the Christians, and the atheists, and the pagans. And, and one part of the covenant was that they will protect one another because I mean they were in the same city that if there was a war against the Muslims I mean the Christians the Jews and they will protect and the same thing vice versa because they were there together so the covenant was binding on them so it was really a disappointment that even though there was this covenant between the Muslims and this community of there were some within them who secretly you know were in support of the Meccans when the Meccans were actually fighting the Muslims. So Allah now indicates that these people are Alevina Ahadita Menuhum. You know, they are part of the Allah categorizes them as in the Shara Dawab as part of the most evil of creatures. Alevina is Ahadita Menuhum Thumma Yankuduna Ahadahum fi kulli maratum la yatakun. Allah says, the, the, the part of them are these people who, when you go into a covenant with them, to Baba Allah, then when you go into a covenant with them, that well, this is the agreement between us. Allah says, Thumba yam kuduna ahada hum fi kulli marra. Each time you enter into a covenant with them, they will break the covenant. You know, wahum la yatakun. They have no fear. They don't fear Allah. You know, you know. I mean, um, for example. Uh, if you look in the history, uh, early Islamic history, there were some um, people in, uh, in Medina, then the Banu Quraiza, Banu Nadir, you know, who eventually, because of breaking their covenant and supporting the enemy, eventually the Prophet ordered that they should be sent out of Medina. Because, I mean, I, 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 I
So the enemy within usually is, I mean, the enemy within usually make does a lot of havoc. So because they were breaking their covenant all the time, you know, and people like Kaab, even Ashraf, even though there was a covenant behind the scene, you know, they will be conniving with the enemy. Allah indicates that well. They are part of the those who are the the the, 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 the most worst of creatures. And the dina ahad chaminuhum thumma yam kuduna ahadahum fi kulli marra. You know, you go into a covenant with them. All the time they will break the covenant. Wahum la and they have no fear of Allah. You know, when we talk about ahad covenants, you know, even individually, when we make covenants between ourselves. You know what the Quran says? Inna kana Allah says, every agreement, every covenant, Allah will revisit it on Yom Al-Qiyam. Allah will ask about it. Every covenant will be asked about. I mean, I, 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 mean, I think in Surah Al-Ma'ida, um, Allah, Allah tells the believers, Ya yuwa al-ladina amanu, awfu bil-uhud. Allah says, oh you believers, make sure that you fulfill all your covenants. When you make a covenant, you must fulfill it. You know, if you think that I mean you are not ready, you are not ready to make a covenant, don't give a person an agreement. You know, in Islam, the, and the prophet indicates, and that, that is one of the characteristics. That is one of the of a true believer. When Allah says, Ya all you who believe fulfill your covenants, you know, and the prophet said that. That is, the believers always stand by their saying. They stand by what they say. And you know the eye of the Munafik, which is the prophet. There are so many traditions. He said, the eye of the Munafik are three. Is a hadatha kadada. When he speaks, he tells lies. Why is a wa'ada akhadatha? When he makes a promise, he will violate it. Is a tumina kana. When you trust him with something, he will come to see you. You know, so you see the beauty of Islam. Islam tells us about all these. Muslims should be people of, I mean, of honor, of their words. That when he says this, Ashe Muslim lo sabai kade babeng. That is what that is what we call a Muslim. You know, and it's not only about and, and you see, and that is. Look, and, and that is the, uh, that is how it should be. Because if it were not like that, if it were not like that, life would be very, very, very difficult. Uh, um, in, in, in international law, the reason why people do covenants, the people why people, people believe in contracts, the reason why people believe in agreements is because there is a standing Classical principle, Pacta Sunt Sevanda, that is all agreements must be fulfilled in good faith. I mean, it is an understanding, it's a convention, an understanding in international relations that all agreements must be fulfilled in good faith. If, if that did not exist, uh, what is the purpose of going, signing the contract? The reason why we sign contract is because we have the confidence in it that where well, people will fulfill. Do you get the point? What sustains a contract is because of the belief in our minds that people will fulfill. And that is what makes life worthy. Otherwise, I mean, if you are going to uh, Elephant and Castle now, you enter, you, you enter the bus here, access to here. Elephant and Castle is still far away, but you pay before you reach Elephant and Castle. It is based on the agreement that even though I'm paying in advance, I know that this person will take me there. <laughs> And you know, because, because you know he will take you there, he will fulfill his agreement. If that were not in existence, <laughs> <laughs> you know, our brother here is talking about the downfall of people in Lagos, and they said that is why there's a lot of chaos because of the fact that I mean people do not stand by the agreement. But it's a people to People stand by their agreement, and that is what makes things I mean easy and possible.
You know, because that's constant of the fact that our will will fulfill all your obligations. So in the eyes of Islam, people who violate their covenants is a very, very serious affair. Because it, it, it's, it's, a very, it's a very, very serious matter. Allah is from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that if you gain advantage, if you meet these people who violate their covenants, that is, and the people who violate their covenants, you don't trust them, you can't trust them. If you meet people who violate their covenants feel hard in war, when you meet them in war, because, I mean, as we are saying, I mean, both in Islamic law, Islamic humanitarian law, and modern humanitarian law, even during, the, I mean, there should be sense in war, the way wars are fought. We mentioned this here yesterday that, I mean, uh, the, uh, Islam indicates that when you are fighting wars, don't kill women, don't kill children, don't, I mean, there should, even in modern warfare, the same thing, don't bomb schools, don't bomb hospitals, even some states do, you know, don't, bomb, don't do all these things. But a lot of the time, people do not keep by their covenants on this issue. So Allah says, if you gain opportunity over these people in war, Allah says, for shall read be him, man khalfam, deal with them severely, so that it will serve as a lesson for those coming after them. You can tell you deal with him, You know, deal with them. I mean, because you can't trust them. You can't trust them that they will abide by the covenant of not killing civilians, of not bombing schools. You know, deal with them severely so that it will be a lesson for those before and so that they will also know that we will not tolerate anything like this. You know, Allah now continues. Why matter half and namin and Allah now advised the Prophet, even in such situations, and you see this is the justice of Islam and the beauty of Islam. Even in such situations, Islam is not saying that, well, just based on suspicion, you know, you can now also play, I mean, uh, dirty tricks. You can, you can also now be treacherous against them. No. Because Muslims stand by their covenants. Therefore, Allah, Allah he addresses the main If you suspect, if you suspect or you see that in the actions of the other party that you are in covenant with, if you see treach treachery, that is, they are not fulfilling their part of the covenant, that they are violating, you suspect or violate agreement, or you see them violating their agreement, Allah says, Fambis ilayhim ala sawa. Throw back their ag agreement to them. Throw back their agreement to them so that you can be on the same footing. Let them know. Tell them, well, because you have violated this agreement, uh, the agreement exists no more. <laughs> Muslims have to, you have, you have to declare to them that where well, Allah says, throw back the agreement to them because they have violated the agreement. Ordinarily, international law, ordinarily, you know, if, if there's a, whether it's a, if, a, a, particularly bilateral treaties, if there's a bilateral treaty, if there's a treaty between two nations, the treaty will subsist as long as both parties keep to the treaty, to the content of the treaty. Immediately one party violates the treaty, automatically the treaty is violated. But Islam does not take it automatically. Even if the other party violates, you have to communicate to them, okay? Treaty, we are, we are not going to abide by it any longer. The, the Islam says don't take them by surprise. Tell them that by your action, you have violated the treaty, therefore, at if agreement, you know, yeah. Let them know it. That by your doing, the agreement has come to an end. In Allah, Allah, you hit Because Allah does not love those who take people by surprise. Allah does not love people who are treacherous. Islam indicates that, well, you have to contact them. And let them know that by your action, you should know that there's no longer any agreement between us. Don't expect any respect of that agreement. So you have given them notice so that you don't take them, so that you, you yourself do not commit treachery. And the Prophet himself said it in one hadith. He said, You know, anyone 
who there is an agreement between him and another community if there's an agreement between you as an individual and another person or between you uh, as a nation and another community he said you should not untie the agreement or tie it too tightly more than it is before until the agreement reach its term sometimes agreements could be for two years for three years until the agreement reach its term or if the other party violate tell them so that both of you can be on the same path so you see the importance the importance i mean of us reflecting on the injunctions of Allah, on the directives of Allah to us. If all these, we follow them. We follow them. But in life today, you know, in most aspects of life today, I mean, people prefer to take you by surprise. In the courts, people want to take you by surprise. In the shops, or an can five pounds lana mm but -hmm. they buy by with this pounds without any notice at all. I mean people just take you by surprise. It's just surprise and surprise, which is treachery. So there's a lot of uncertainties. You know, if Islam does not allow that, Islam, the rules of Islam, Islam does not Islam does not allow that. No? So may Allah make it easy for us. Wala ya sabana ladina kafaru. Wala ya sabana ladina kafaru sabaku inna hum la yuzzi. Allah says, Wala ya sabana ladina kafaru sabaku. The disbelievers, the non-believers should never think that they have escaped. No matter what, Allah, the non-believers should never think that they have escaped. The Mufassirun also indicate that this also relates to Badr. But the lesson is also general. Because you know, a lot of the Mushrikul, a lot of the Kafirun were killed in Badr, as we said. But many of them escaped and went back to Mecca. Many of them survived and went back to Mecca. Then the Quran says, Walaya Sabban Kafaru Sabaku. Don't don't let those who escaped, don't let them think that they have escaped from Allah. In Nahum. La you No matter what they do, they can never frustrate the plans of Allah. Allah That's what Allah says. No matter what, they cannot frustrate the plans of Allah. Allah. And it can also be general. You know? Allah <laughs> Allah 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 should never think that after a new day, you can have escaped. Allah says no. You know, in now Allah you just you just Allah says they cannot, they can never frustrate the plans of Allah in that regard. So it is very, very essential for us to think about this. I mean, if we know this and comply by this, you know, you don't need any police officer to, to police you. You don't need any police officer to police you to do what is good. Yeah. You don't need, and you know, a lot, of, a lot of these things do happen here. I mean, and this is what makes things work. Well, you know? Yeah. You know? And although there are sometimes things do happen, but generally, I mean, we do receive visitors a lot. Sometimes somebody came to, I mean, to visit from Nigeria, yeah. And we were driving in the night, I mean, weekend night, it was very quiet. And we stop at the red light. He said, We can go now. There's no red light. He said, We are the only one. He says We are the only one on the street. A Muslim should never think like that. A Muslim should never, never, never think like that. Because a Muslim should operate within the laws, within order, I mean, the concept of reserve, orderliness. A Muslim should operate within. You know, a Muslim doesn't need a police to police you. You don't need your boss to be over your. I mean, as long as you are being paid, you have to do the equal job for the equal pay. That's just it. I mean, think of the concept of. I mean, the Muslims talk about this all the time. The concept of barakah. 
you know, the concept of bad account, well, okay, well, if you do, if you earn something and you do not do your work for it, there will be no bad account. Okay. I mean, this is the concept to show that, I mean, you don't need any anything, I'm okay, or no, I'm sure, no, I'm there, we will be in here. May Allah make it easy for us. Why do وَاعْلَمُونَهُمْ وما تنفقوا من شيء في سبيل الله يوفى إليكم وأنتم لا تسلمون. This is also about I mean nation nation building and it relates to the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. You know we should understand all the nations around the the Romans the Byzantines. I mean they were very powerful nations around. Um, apart from the Arabs, the powerful nations around who were very, very strong. You know, I mean, for example, you, in Surah to Rome, Quran chapter 30, Quran talks about the, Ro the Romans. I mean, they had a lot of power at that time. I mean, these were the powers of the time that the young Muslim nation was facing, was contesting with. So Allah was telling the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that I mean for the for, for the sustainability of the state. Wa idu lahum master tatum. You know? Allah says, Wa idu lahum master tatum min kuwatin wa min ribat al khayl. You should not be complacent. Don't go to sleep with your two eyes closed. You know? You should make ready, prepare for them, master tatum. What is possible? Prepare. What is possible? In power. Prepare what is possible for you in power. And strong horses that can be used for war. That is Aina. Because all these big nations have their own big armaments. Don't be the weakling in the, in the, in the area. You should also prepare. Get ready. You know, get ready. Get ready with Kuwa. With power and horses. When you have this, you will cast fear in the heart of the enemies of Allah and your enemies. I mean, America, they man Logan for 10 years, but they continue to amass armaments. I mean, when, when, when you talk about it, they said it is for deterrence. They say it's for deterrence. We have to, this is to protect us. Look at, I mean, I. What is the name of our submarine here in the UK? Yeah, Trident. Yeah. You know, what does, what does, and there, was, there were very big debates, it cost a lot of money. And those who are for it say that, well, Britain cannot afford not to have it. We need it in order to protect our borders. We need it in order to cast fear in the heart of the enemy, the Russia, and things like that. So that is how nations behave. You know, that is how nations behave. And Allah was instructing the Prophet then, because there were so many big powers around that have big, big armaments. Allah was telling the Prophet that don't sit on your hands. Mm. Don't put your hands like this and sit on it. Mm. You know, you should also yeah. prepare. Yeah. Get ready. Get ready. You know, in relation with power and also they said and strong horses, tie them. Tie the strong horses at the posts. You know? To you know, so that uh, the enemies will know that well, you are also ready. You know, and even some enemies that you do not know, which only Allah knows them. You Whatever you spend in the path of Allah to protect the state, the young state of Medina. You will get it back in multiple rewards from Allah. Wa antum la tuz lemun, and Allah will not be unjust to you. So you are able to see. I mean, when we are talk, talking about nation building, and I mean, since seventh century, the Quran was saying this, and this is what exists everywhere today. And when so sometimes when the when the debates 
when the talking, when the jaw jaw becomes very hot, for example, between Russia and America, by the time you know it, you see that America will be doing their military display. Yes. They will bring out our, all the tanks. They will roll it, roll it, just roll it to know that well, this is what we have. You know, don't don't play the France. They are not going to do anything, but they'll just roll it round, roll it round, and pack and pack them again, and pack them back again. You know, and when perhaps maybe China is doing something, America now will put a, the, the the what the, the carriers on the on the sea and say yes, go just. Move round <laughs> and let them exercise. Move round and let them see. That is that is how nations behave. You know? And it is the nature of humanity. Yes, I mean, a lot of the time we talk about the fact that, well, I mean, there are people who promote what we call a pacifist um, theory, indicating that, well, there should be no war in war. But the reality of human nature is it's, it's really unpredictable. That is the truth. Human nature is very, very unpredictable. And the, the, the uncertainty, surprising, the uncertainty, the fear of what the other could do makes it really difficult for any nation state to say that, well, I want to sit on my hands. Because, I mean, the truth is, everybody is talking about it. We need to disarm, disarmament. We need to disarm. But the truth is, uh, well, who will bear the cap? Who will start? <laughs> everybody is looking at every, everyone. Okay, who will start? You know, you have to disarm up to this. Everybody, America is looking at Russia. Russia is looking at the UK. So that we know how, because there's no trust. Everybody is afraid. Exactly. You know, so it is very, very, I mean, logical. This is logical. The reason I'm saying this is that I want us to understand it in the context. That Islam, as I said yesterday, it is not about Islam promoting warfare but Islam facing reality. You know, it is not about Islam promoting warfare, it is about Islam promoting, um, I mean, uh, um, um, facing reality. For you to be able to know, I will direct you to, I mean, look at Quran chapter 22, ayah 39. Quran chapter 22, Surah of Hajj, ayah 39. The ulama of Syria indicate that, because initially, the Muslims did not have permission to go to war at all. You know, they didn't have any permission to go to war until Allah gave them permission, until there was revelation. And the ulama says that this is the first revelation that gave permission for the Muslims to go to war. And if you read it, you'll be able to see, you'll be able to appreciate that Islam does not war monger. They just face reality. The Quran says in Ayah 39, who's in an inlet monger? this is the first revelation that permits the Muslims to go to war. You know, you know, they were persecuted in Mecca. They couldn't fight. They were persecuted in Mecca because they were waiting for permission. One of Eshin, Katolo, Mbau, no, was it? They were until they were cast out of Mecca to go to Medina, and they were being persecuted. Then Revelation came. Allah says, "Uzina lil Medina yukata luna bianna hum zulimu." Allah says, "Okay, permission is now given to those who are fought against." You know, permission is now granted to the Muslims and Levina yukata luna. I will give Allah this permission to you because you are being fought at because you are being treated unjustly because you are, uh, there's oppression against you. That is, permission is given to you to fight because you are being fought against and you are being treated unjustly. And no, because of this situation, Allah is able to help you. Allah now says, These are people who were sent out of their homes. They were pushed out of their homes, the Geril Hak. You know, not based on truth. 
they were sent out of their homes began illa an yaqulu rabbun allah their only offense was to say that our lord is allah i mean their only offense i mean they they were sent out of their homes allah says i mean and allah is not unjust Allah says you can now fight back to defend because walaula dafu Allah in nasi baadhum bibad lahudi mat sawamia wa biyaun wa salawat wa masajid yuskara fi hasmu Allah kathira. Allah says if this permission is not given, if Allah does not give permission for people to help themselves, you know, yani walaula dafu Allah in nasi baadhum bibad. If Allah has not given permission that people should help one another. Or to I mean uh, to defend themselves. You know, the aggressive people will have destroyed monasteries, they will have destroyed churches, they will destroy masajid, they will destroy all places of worship in which the names of Allah are remembered. You know, Allah says, Allah will help those who help him in the Aziz. Allah is most strong, most majestic. So if you see this, you see that the reason, the permission to fight that was given to the Muslims was because Allah says they were just to fight because they were being fought against. They have to fight back because they were being fought against. So I'm just trying to go to this length to connect this to that ayah we were looking at for us to be able to appreciate that Islam, when people talk about the fact that Islam is a religion that promotes aggressive warfare, it's not true. You know, you have to understand the Quran in context and see all this in context. May Allah give us a good understanding, inshallah. Allah now says, and see it again. Actually, even fighting in self-defense is a con is a conditional one. Allah says, "Wa in Jannahul is sin." If the enemy now inclines towards peace, if the enemy decides to stop and incline towards peace, fajina laha, you must also accept peace. No. This is what the Quran says. I mean, so it's, if the enemy inclines towards peace, command Allah says, "Fajina laha." You know, you must also imbibe peace, whatever call Allah, and put your trust in Allah. Inna hu was You know, Allah hears everything and knows everything. So you are able to see, you know, the default situation in Islam is peace. You know, even in warfare, the price is, my Indian will listen. If they decide to say that, well, ah, my Indian, Allah says, Fajna Allah, you should also imbibe the peace. And to, even if they are lying, and lastly, whatever call Allah, put your faith in Allah in the who who has sent you. You know, and it's I mean in many places, for example, Allah tells the prophet in relation to I mean, because issues 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 were raised in relation to the fact that in the, the concept of khiyana, that what of if the enemy is lying, if the enemy is being treacherous by saying that well we want peace. So that you can drop your guard and you can then hit you suddenly. You know? Allah assured the Prophet, he said, Wayam Wallah, we ask look at me like that. Don't worry, Allah will protect you against the people. You know, you see, look at my woman she don't know. Well now we ask smoke me than that. Elena Laka you can die far out of my and in the Surah Al-Ma'idah, Quran chapter 5, Ayah 67. It's a very popular ayah. You know? And the Prophet demonstrated it. This ayah, when in Janahu, the self, if they invite peace, Fajr Allah, you also invite peace. Whatever can Allah and put your faith in Allah. The Prophet demonstrated it immediately during the treaty, the truce of Hudaybiyah. During the truce of the Prophet, I mean, after Islam became quite strong, and the prophets had it. they were wanted to go to uh, to Mecca in order to go to the Umrah. At a place in Hudaybiyah, the Quraysh came with their forces and stopped the prophet. They said you cannot go in. They couldn't go in. You know they camped at Hudaybiyah for quite a while, and people like Umar became very very agitated. You know Umar ibn Khattab became very agitated. That what I mean let's let's fight our way let's fight our way in. 
the best of us is in the face, but they have to let's fight our way in. Then the maker said, no, wait. We will offer you a truce. Let us have an agreement. Go back. Don't come into Mecca this year. Go back, you know, and after you can now come and you will stay a number of days. No, they will, they will treat the, the truce of the year that there will be no fighting between us for 10 years. And they accepted the truce and the Mecca and the, the Prophet didn't go to Mecca, they went back to Medina. But eventually the Meccans broke the truce, they broke the truce. They couldn't stand by it. So by breaking the truce, the Prophet announced them that they, they, they soon would they be here, the treaty of the Hudaybiyah, you have violated it, and we are coming into Mecca. And that is how the Prophet entered into Mecca. Allah made photo of Mecca for him. They entered Mecca without any bloodshed. You know, and you are able to see, you know, from, from this perspective, that Islam is a religion of peace. Whereby Allah says, well, in general, is Salim, and the Prophet demonstrated, if they tilt towards peace, accept peace. Fajin Allah. Whatever Kalal Allah, put your faith in Allah, in Nahu, who was Sami with Ali, because Allah hears and knows everything. Not only in community, not only in nation state building, there are lessons for us actually also individually. There are lessons for us individually. And you know, for the little work in relation to diplomacy that I do, and this is what diplomats do. You know, this is what diplomacy teaches you. I mean, in relation to diplomats, they can go on and on and on in finding compromises. You know, in life, if anybody who takes a position that, well, I mean, I will not compromise, or you buy him you find out that, I mean, they usually lose and fall. They usually lose and fall. You know, everything can, as we say, everything can be discussed, everything can be negotiated. Everything can be negotiated. You know, you can revisit again and look, okay, well, okay. And, you know, and, and look at your options. Look at your options and negotiate. And that is how life is. You know? <coughs> so may Allah continue to guide us our right. What do you read? 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 هو الذي أيدك بنصره وبالمؤمنين. الله says وإن يريد أن يحدوك. As I said, you know, there were some of the Sahaba who feared that. I mean, what if they were lying? Allah, Allah, Allah assured the Prophet. وإن يريد أن يحدوك. Should they intend to deceive you? That is in saying that well, we want peace. Should they intend to deceive you? Allah says, فَإِنَّا حَسْبَكَ Allah. Allah will suffice you. If they decide to say that they want to deceive you, be sure Allah will suffice you. Who الَّذِي أَيَدَكَ بِالنَّسِرِهِ وَبِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ It was He actually in the beginning who helped you in Badr. It was Allah who helped you and the believers in Badr. Allah na lo kuku ren lo wo tele o wa so pe to ba pe ni to ba paro nko to ba je ron o ba paro je ko ma paro won lo ko ma jogun ro won you know fa inna allah fa inna hasbaka allah allah is enough for you allah ba to e you know because who led you ayya daka bin nasri wa bil mu'minin it was he who aided you in the beginning and the believers you know wa allafa baina qulubihim wa allafa baina qulubihim لو أنفقت ما في الأرض جميعا ما حلفت بين قلوبهم ولكن الله ألف بينهم إنه عزيز حكيم. Allah says it was Allah who helped you before and the believers. شيء الله بامانة يا لو Allah helps Allah does helps but one way of Allah helping. Is to surround you with helpers. You know, Allah will not come down by Himself. Even in relation to Badr, when Allah was helping, Allah descended the angels. But the Prophet, Allah is talking. Allah is talking to the Prophet. He will help you, and the believers. With the, with the believers were around you. You know, and Nabi only dash and say, to Nabi Allah on Allah Balona. But without the believers around him, he could not have fulfilled anything. The Prophet alone will not win Badr. He needed people around him. The prophet alone cannot propagate Islam, could they be today? He needed people around him. Allah says, remember that previously it is Allah who helped you and the believers. Allah says, 
It is Allah who joined, who put affection in the hearts of the believers. Allah now says, Ma jora iloju, lau am fakta ma fil ardi jami an ma Allah fta bayna kulubi. Even if you have spent everything on earth for them, you will not be able to join their hearts. It is Allah who joined their hearts for you. I mean, olori kama aso kwe miti mukmati mama motion scheme. I want to go around. No, you can't. Even the prophet Allah says, I mean, law and fakta ma fil ardi jami an ma Allah fta bayna kulubi. If you have spent everything on earth for them, you cannot have joined their hearts. It is Allah who put affection in their hearts. Walakin Allah ala fabeinahum. It is Allah who put affection in their hearts. And you see, the Sahaba loved the Prophet. They loved the Prophet even more than themselves. Allah bani shebe. You know, I mean, now yeri malto so gata abamas. We we need to really appreciate this, and it is in the nature of man. You know, but yeah, I need You know, in your last you have to have people around you. You know what Allah says? Allah says, Imalu, continue working. For Sayyar Allah, Amalakum, Wal Rasul, Wal Muminu. Continue working. Allah sees everything that you do, and the Prophet and the believers around you. And I'm also okay. Well, you mind anything to bang anybody, but go so. Ah, no, you don't do that. You have to be conscious about people around you as well. You know, I want everybody in that. You know, very low. I mean, only 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 only. Make sure that you are good and have to good people around you. You know, tea bang boba dro da da. You have good people around you. Allah says. Yani, walakin Allah, Allah for them, inna who are season hakim. Allah is most majestic, most wise. Ya you are Nabi. Ya you are Nabi, you have book Allah. Woman it tabaka min al muhmini. Allah now says, Ya you are Nabi, O Prophet, has book Allah. Allah is sufficient for you. Woman it tabak, and Allah is sufficient for those who follow you, min al muminin, among the believers. Oh no, about two, you know, about two, you know, about two, you know, about two, you know, about two, I want to tell you, you know, I want to tell you, God is enough for you and for those who believe. Now, it's, it's not, I mean, if you look at the, if you could look at the characters of the Arabs, because the Sahaba around the Prophet were the ordinary Arabs who lived in Arabia. And, I mean, they were very hard people, yet Allah put compassion in, 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 the, in their hearts. Around the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu which made the work of the Prophet Sallallahu I mean, relatively easier. You know, uh, and Allah reminds us, "Was kuru niyat Allah alaykum is kuntum aada and fa Allah fabeena kudu biku." Allah says, "Remember, don't forget, these people. Remember when you were enemies. You know, fighting one another, the Aws and the Hazraj fighting one another, the others fighting amongst themselves, and Allah brought your hearts together." <laughs> You know, the ulama looking at this says there's a lesson for us as Muslims. There's a lesson for us as Muslims wherever we are in this. A single person cannot, a single tree cannot make a forest. A single tree cannot make a forest. You need people around you to make the ummah to go forward. But that's one step. The most important condition is that the affection between the hearts of the people, the unity, the affection between the hearts of the people, be abapona. If we are so much and there is no affection between the hearts, it will actually be counterproductive. The Quran says somewhere, Tasabo hum jami and it will, he said, I mean, he said, you see them that you think that they are Jemi and that they are together. But all their hearts are separated. If we, Allah wants us that we should not put ourselves in that situation, we should not just come together while our hearts are, are shattered, are, are, are scattered. Because if we are in that situation, it won't work. 
you know, the Sahaba were around the Prophet, but Allah, Allah, I mean, their hearts were together with the Prophet. It's difficult, it's not easy. And this is why the Prophet, Allah tells that even if the Prophet has spent everything in the world, he could have not individually been able to bring their hearts together, but it is Allah who brought their hearts together. But how did Allah do it? Allah did it with, the, with Iman, with faith. It is the faith that bound them together. I mentioned the ayah I mentioned earlier that was Kuru is Kuntum If you look at the beginning of our, the ayah, yeah, the, the beginning of that verse, that is the solution. Allah says, Wata simu bi habli lai jamia. Wata simu bi habli lai jamia. What can bring our hearts together is Allah says, All of you hold on to the rope of Allah. All of you hold on to the rope of Allah. That is, hold on, hold on to the concept of one belief. Hold on to the book of Allah. So, I mean, the, 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 the important thing, as we, we are saying, that's about the rate of Siri, what can bring our hearts together is it is Sabi Habdullah, that is holding on together to the rope of Allah. You know, holding together to the injunctions of Allah, to the Quran, which we all say together. Thank God. You know, not personal interests. You know, not pursuing personal interests. Although, as we say, you know, I mean, I, I, must be, I must be realistic and practical here, but I will explain it here. I'm not naive. You know, whatever human beings do, whatever, whatever human beings do, it is not value neutral. It is not value neutral. Everything we do, we do it based on certain incentives. We do it based on certain things that we derive from it. You know? So when I say that personal interest, but the personal interest that Allah wants from us in relation to holding on together to the rope of Allah is that Peter Shebe Arali Janao. Do you get the point? And when I do that, the personal interest that makes me to do it is because I want to, I want the pleasure of Allah. Do you get, I mean, I want, I want the pleasure of Allah, I want to go to Al Jannah. So if I, if that is the interest, then you, you know that we have a common interest. We then have a common interest that unite us in order to do the same thing together. Do you get the point? So it is very, very essential. I'm not naive. Any human being, don't, I mean, don't let anybody deceive you. But you know, everything we do is value laden. There isn't anything that says value neutral. I just didn't know. But the point is, in relation to the unity of the Muslims, rather than, I mean, let us concentrate on the common, common interest. Which is a Islam to that Ubuana Labi, consider the Katati to that Joko and Wan or Long Nan. We want a lot to reward us. We want, we believe that after life, there's another life. You know, after life, there's another life. We, we, we seek a gender. In Yenola to the common goal, when we all hold on to the rope of Allah, our hearts will melt together. So, come about that. When our hearts melt together, you know, we'll be able to, to, to succeed. And Allah says, Ya Yuan Nabi, Hasbuk Allah, wa manit tadaka min al mu'minin. If we are able to do that, the injunctions of Allah will come to pass. Allah will be enough for us as followers of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it's very, very, very essential, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. You know? You know what Allah says in Surah to Maryam? Lord, Iman in and because of I mean, in, in, in looking for, looking for, I mean, peace and love, looking, I mean, collective love. If you look in Surah to Maryam, Allah says, Inna ladina amanu wa amilu saliyat, sayyad allahum rahmanu wa dan. Allah says, certainly, those who believe in Allah, amatu wa nimani, inna ladina amanu, those who believe in Allah wa amilu saliyat and do good deeds. Sayyidah Allahumma Rahman, Allah the most beneficent, 
Yaj'allahu wadan will put love in their heart. You know, and that's the common ground. The common ground is Iman and good deed, wanting to hold on to the love of Allah. If we have that commitment and that intention, you know, Allah says, Yaj'allahu wa rahmanu wa den. Allah, the most beneficent, will put love in our hearts. So I commend this to you and myself, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. I commend it to you and Ejeka to everybody. Ejeka to everybody. Ejeka to everybody, Dada. Allah has blessed us with community. Community, to Allah, if you bless and nabi na ni tan nabi fi shengi shi. The Sahaba around the Prophet were very, very committed. They were very, very committed, and therefore the Prophet was able to fulfill his mission. We also have a community. Ejeka to commitment iwashi. You know Ramadan. I'm saying this because yani now the hearts have softened. Tabakuro mbi ejo. Ask yourself individually. Mina abirami. What am I? What good am I contributing to this community? How can I contribute to this community to make it go forward? You know what the prophet said? The prophet said, I mean, this is the Shaharul Baraka. This is the month of blessings. Show Allah the goodness in you. In this month. Show Allah the goodness in you. Let us think individually. How, in what ways do I contribute to make this community enviable? And how can I do more? Olon ko joko na walo. Olon ko mat nwangpa. Eleta mwi. Olon ma shere ba le jogo. Ilela bunta fi no Islam lo. Olon ma sha da fe ni kofawa. Ilela ilela. Idi ayidi. Ah ibare ni ya. Olon ma sha ba le jinasi. Ba shi soi. Olon ko wola al Quran ta kili pe ta fi som. Jama wa i olon ma sha ba ni kubu. Kubu ba shi fe ni da da. Kubu ta mi kofa si ta ba shi ba ni kuma yuda. Ta ba shi ba ni kuma yuda. Olon ni kubu ba olon ma ba padi. Ilala ilala. Ta ba wa i shi be na bukate ni kofa wa olon ma dalu wa. Olon ma kubu kata wa. Olon ma olon ma pu wa. Ilala ilala ilala. Subhanallah. Subhanallah.